We're going to go out in the electrical shop today and you can see what a mess I have over here uh, of uh, past projects and so on. But today we're going to focus on uh, enclosures for Arduino projects that need an LCD and maybe a little bit of uh, wireless breadboarding. Uh, and the whole idea of an enclosure is so that you can pick it up and carry it away and so that it will be uh, uh, covered on all sides so that you won't short stuff out and things like that. But uh, I've had trouble finding enclosures that uh, I can buy commercially. I've tried a lot of other boxes and so on that you could buy commercially uh, and uh, they vary all over the map. They're either too big or they're too skinny. Many of the ones that are for sale at places like even Adafruit, they're nice little enclosures for an Arduino, but they don't allow you enough room. Well, today I want to talk about enclosures for my Arduino projects, the kind where I need uh, some kind of a display that I can read from a few feet away, uh, an Arduino Uno, which I use a lot, and uh, some little bit of a room for breadboarding if I need it. I've had a hard time finding uh, simple, inexpensive enclosures that will do all that stuff and so here I'm today so here today I'm going to talk about the range of enclosures that I have found and what works for me so here we go so first off from companies like Adafruit you can get all kinds of enclosures the trouble is they're generally too skinny to put a, a Uno in there and a display in here too and have some room for uh, breadboarding. So here's one, let's see, here's another style, here's another little tiny one, here's a metal one that'd be cute for an Arduino but what else you're going to do to fit an LCD screen in there that just aren't thick enough. Okay. Here's another one. And they're kind of expensive. They're anyway from six, ten, twelve dollars or more. On the other hand, way over here we've got big ones that are big enough. This one would come from a a big box store, you know, it's a duplex receptacle that's got a lot of depth to it, very expensive, heavy metal. Here's one I think that Adafruit and others have, and this has got the height and so on, but again, it's very expensive and way bigger than I need. Here's another one from a big box store, and it's a regular electrical outlet, and of course you could put tons of stuff in there, but again, it's way too big and expensive, 10, 15, 20 bucks sometimes. And here's one from a company, I think it was from Radio Shack way back when. Yep, Radio Shack years ago. Again, way too big and quite expensive and expensive to ship even. So, what I've showed you so far is too small and expensive, too big and expensive. So, what's just right? Well, here's some of my just right.
this one, which is actually built into just a simple cardboard box that some small thing came shipped in. There's an Arduino in there, there's breadboarding here, and there's a 1602 uh, LCD there. Cheap. Here's one, and I'll talk more about these later. Uh, this is a, a simple little uh, baking pan that came from the dollar store or maybe the kitchenware part of a grocery store with just a piece of uh, uh, sure pegboard cut up to fit and this one's got a 1604 or 2004 LCD on it. And this messy looking thing is no more than from the big box store, just a duplex receptacle outlet. They call these the deep type because they're deeper. There's room for the Arduino in there. There's room for some breadboarding. And although I've got a receptacle on here because this, this is a device, I'll talk about them later, but this is a device that heats up and, uh, and turns a relay on and off to maintain a temperature. And there's just a light bulb screwed in there right now. But if you just got one of these and then used any kind of a piece of thin plywood, plastic, or wood as a cover, you could cut that out for an LCD. And again, this one is cheap, a uh, dollar or two at the big box stores. And just one uh, last comment, you might ask, well, what's the big deal about having an LCD? Gee whiz, they've got TFT displays these days. Well, let's take a look at the TFT displays. This is a little, I don't know, what is that, inch and a half inch square TFT display. Uh, tiny little letters and compare that with a 1602 for instance, because all I'm doing with my projects is I, I'm not that big on lead lighting and all that stuff. I need to solve problems. How hot is this? How cool is this? What's the pressure? Uh, how does this compare to that? You know, that kind of thing. So I need projects that actually do stuff. So I need to be able to see this thing from several feet away. Uh, and uh, that's why I am focusing on an Arduino, an LCD, and some bread breadboarding. And yet, here's, here's another one of those TFT displays. That's even physically smaller than the other one. Uh, okay, and, and just to give you an idea, So this, this, of course, is a Circuit Playground Express. And I don't know if you can read those characters that showed up right away, but they're there okay. But you get very far away, at least for my old eyes, they're certainly hard to read. So I just need the simplicity of the LCD reading a couple of lines of stuff. So that's that for uh, my general discussion about uh, too big, too small, and just right. So just for reference, this is my 2500 watt ZVS induction heater. And one of the uh, enclosures that I want to talk about is this little enclosure right here. And what's in there is a uh, circuit that, be, that uh, measures the current flow and turns on and off a uh, DC uh, solid state relay. It's got a, an Arduino Uno down inside. Now this particular one doesn't have a piece of breadboard down there, but it certainly does have a uh, LCD display. And that's the point I want to make, is that all you need is any box that's, I would say, any box that's like an inch and a half deep or thereabouts and maybe four, four and a half inches wide at the widest point, maybe five like that one, and maybe three inches in the, uh, in the uh, width dimension. So it doesn't have to be fancy, that's all it's got to be. This one, again, I've added a couple of push buttons uh, to do a couple of functions, and um, I just, uh, uh, you know, cut a square hole out of the top of this lid of this hinged box, and um, and used a couple of 440 screws, I think they were, and nuts uh, to uh, hold hold the LCD up uh, against the lid. 
So that's it. I cut a couple of holes in the ends here uh, for, uh, you know, power outputs, programming, that sort of thing. Anyway, so that's that's one of the enclosures that just came from this particular one. Some kid's uh, little craft toy kit came in that box. Here are three other examples of enclosures that I'm going to talk about. This one here is uh, Electricity uh, Iman Project. Iman, I don't know what it stands for. Electrical monitoring or something like that. This one is a coil saturation tester that I made uh, when I was working on making an engine control unit for a wood gas uh, powered uh, generator set. This one is a temperature sensor project that was part of a uh, uh, Arduino group uh, project uh, that one of our guys set up a number of years ago just for something for everybody to try to do and see how it worked out. And I'll get at those later. Okay, here's one kind of enclosure that uh, is a little plastic box that was uh, some kids craft toys came inside and uh, this one is uh, five inches long three inches wide and two inches tall to the outsides. This particular one uh, has a uh, an Uno in it and of course an LCD screen which uh, just uh, shows uh, millivolts and amps. It's used on my 2500 watt ZVS induction heater setup uh, uh, to drive this 50 amp uh, DC solid state relay uh, so that I can't go over current and blow up anything. So that's all that one does. But the point is, again, that this is just an enclosure which is a leftover from a kid's craft toy. Okay, this uh, enclosure is a tiny little baking tray and uh, its use is uh, for its use is for uh, monitoring power using a split core current transformer uh, used to clamp around a single 120 volt AC connector and it just uh, 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 actually reads the current and then calculates the power in watts at 120 volts in this position or 240 volts in that position. But the point is that the enclosure is about five inches long, two and a, two and a half inches wide, and and a little over two inches deep. And inside we've got an Uno with a uh, inside we've got an Uno with a breadboard on top of it, solder type breadboard, and then of course the LCD and uh, and the uh, I squared and the I squared C uh, mechanism. So the top, the, the cover that I made for it is just a piece of thin pegboard I had left over from some other project. And again, the point is, this is just another enclosure that you can use for your Arduino project with a display on the top and you protect it from uh, getting, uh, you know, damaged uh, during its lifetime. Here's another enclosure and clearly that's just made out of a cardboard box that came in the mail with some other stuff in it 
and uh, this particular one is again it's five and a half inches long and it is uh, three inches wide and it's and it's uh, about uh, two inches deep and in this particular case here uh, I built the display part on a piece of solderless breadboard uh, this is a uh, ignition coil saturation tester for whatever that's worth and it's got an uno down inside and again it's just a cardboard box and this one as I said earlier is a this is a coil saturation tester rig that I built up and the flashing LED is simulating the speed that a engine would be running and uh, so it's reading out uh, RPMs and the uh, the uh, charging time for the ignition coil okay and so these signals would be set to the or sent to a coil on plug pack and that would be uh, triggering the the coil and the job here would be to see how long what's the shortest possible time you can have the uh, current onto the coil and still get it totally saturated but the point is again that this is just a simple little box uh, that just something came shipped in and so you don't even have to buy this particular thing in order to be able to have a project that's based on an Arduino like an Uno like I use and an LCD display and maybe some solderless breadboard or PC boards or what have you in there all fitting in the same container. Here we have another example of an enclosure uh, that's cheap and readily available. It's just a two-gang electrical box, the, the deep style, as they call it, the deep style. All it's being used for is to just uh, sense temperature. And uh, it's a little more involved than that. Uh, uh, we have this light bulb that turns on and then we uh, get it up to temperature and then this gets hot and it turns off the light bulb and I don't know cycles or something like that but the point is it's another enclosure that's cheap and um, this one doesn't have an LCD on it but here's a 1602 I guess and you can see that that would fit in a different kind of a cover here for a project and it would also hold the Uno down inside this particular box is probably three and three quarters inches inside it's uh, about three inches deep and and it's about two inches wide so again this is just another example of an enclosure that would hold an Arduino and an LCD display and possibly some circuitry on a little piece of uh, solderless breadboard and so on in closing I am just a hobbyist maker who usually makes Arduino projects to help me solve a particular problem. Not that I am against fancy displays and flashing lights and special audio effects, but those things just aren't my cup of tea. I hope you can see from these four projects that finding enclosures for packaging your Arduino problem-solving project doesn't have to cost much if you don't need them to be fancy. Thank you for watching. Please check out my Arduino playlist which is listed in the description below.